tonight. And on the end of the night call, I'll be making announcements of how you can stay connected to Mr. Brown and what is happening with his platinum speakers and the movement of igniting voices of hope all over the world. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the legend himself, none other than Mr. Les Brown. Les, are you with us? Yes, I am, and I plan to be with you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right, because we just can't yes. get enough for you, Mr. Brown. So thank, thank you so much you. for being thank here you so and hearing much. your voice. It's always a privilege and a pleasure. All right. Well, I thank you so much for your help and support and, and Nidabu and and hosting and making it possible for me to be, be able to speak to everybody. Someone said I'm supposed to be in Athens, Georgia. Please yes. email me at lesbrown.com because somebody somebody's go well, head go roll tomorrow morning Athens uh, Georgia that's my first time hearing about that please let me know about that please email me at yes yes at lesbrown.com the sponsoring organization so I can reach out to somebody because I don't miss uh, engagements so but let me let me get into uh, my presentation tonight I want everybody to think about some goals and dreams that you'd like to achieve. And first of all, every opportunity that I get to be on this call, I'm going to affirm you. I'm going to validate you. Because you represent a small number. It's a small number of people that would take the time to carve out some time to hear something that can help them to live their dreams, to become a better person, to make a difference in their community, to be able to stretch themselves and to challenge themselves, to, to use all that God has placed in them. Most people are spectators. They, they spend the majority of their time watching entertainment, sporting events, television. That's what the majority of people do. The majority of people spend their time and their money on things that provide for them relief from their life, stress. Uh, they, they look for distractions. And so you're being on this call. Let me share with you. And, I, and I've been doing a lot of reflecting since I turned 70 on February the 17th. And, and as I'm walking in to this next level of living of my life on what I want to do and what I want to accomplish. And as I'm talking to my twin brother on a regular basis and reflecting on our lives and my other brothers and sisters that we were adopted together, it's interesting how people can be raised in the same household, same parents, and end up dramatically different. So you're, you're choosing to do something positive. You're choosing to expose your mind to something that can stretch your mind and enhance your mind while the rest of the world is listening to a record. I, I was at a red light, and a young man stopped at the red light, and he had his music playing real loud. And, and, and the song that was on was, I'm going to have that B get my money. That B better get my money. Now, and you know the word. It didn't say B, but you know the word. And it, uh, I, the people behind me had to blow their horn because I had to pause for a moment. And I was just thinking that our kids are listening to that day in and day out. And we're in a time where there's no such thing as decency. We're in a time that using profanity and using vulgar words in your regular everyday conversations in form of communication, it's, it's, it's as if these words are acceptable and normal in conversations. I, I, I have a, a friend, we, we have investments in, in daycares, and, and to hear young kids, I'm talking about four and five years old, sometimes younger, using profanity. And sometimes parents stand around and hear it, so, isn't that cute? Oh, look at him. Did you hear what she just said? Let me tell you something. That's, there's nothing cute about that. And when you look at 
most of our kids all tattooed up. I got a nephew that's getting out of jail. And I'm not sure, I'm not out of jail, out of prison. And I'm not sure he's ready. Because he said to my sister, if she couldn't come pick him up, he will have one of his homies pick him up. Let me tell you something. First of all, all of his homies are, are felons. One of the rules when you get out of prison, you're not to associate with felons. That's, that's parole violation, not to even be in a car with them, in the same place with them. So that says to me, he hasn't learned anything. He's got more tattoos now than when he came in, and all the other tattoos that he had before he went in, that said to me, that was preparation. That was preparation. He went to graduation. That was it's his... Um, it's a, it's a it's a boy's passage, you know. It's it's that these young guys see going to jail as as street cred gives them credibility, getting all tattooed up and the earrings and 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 the fact that they go to jail, not knowing that when they get out, the the opportunity to get a legitimate job, even if they turn their lives around. So slim, it's unbelievable. Can't even work in a, in a school as a janitor. Can't work in a daycare center. Can't work in hospitals. I mean, they're just, the society makes them pay over and over and over and over and over again. That's why the recidivism rate is over 87%, because they can't find legitimate way to earn a legitimate living. They can't get public housing. But my nephew, who wanted to go to jail so desperately and worked so hard at it, um, he got exactly what he deserved, and I thought he would have learned something. See, if I went to, to jail, prison, and they told me, we don't want you associating with any ex-felons, and, and nobody was around to come pick me up, and I didn't have bus fare, I would just say, point me in the direction of where I need to go. I would walk. I remember my cousin Boo and I, we were in a car with some friends, and they started lighting up. Mac Arthur, to my left, he started shooting up heroin, and, and, and then the other guys in the car, they started smoking weed. I said, can y'all pull over for just a minute? Just a minute, just pull over to the side. I said, what, you got to have You want, you you want? got to have a leak? I said, just pull over for just a moment. I, I need to stop for just a moment. Then when they pull over, I got out, Boo got out, probably about 2 o'clock in the morning. We're in Liberty City, and we walked. It took us probably two to three hours to get home. We walked. I was not going to be in that car when... The police pull them over, smelling weed, alcohol, and drugs in the car. No, no, absolutely not. And, and so one of the things that these young boys like my nephew, just straight up dumb, dumb with a capital D, stupid with a capital S. It's unbelievable. I, I, I find this hard to believe. And so what I, I want you to, to think about right now is, number one, stay away from dumb people. <laughs> Lazy, trifling people who have no qualms about complaining and sitting around looking at television and wondering, will the Cavaliers make the playoff? And did you see the last episode of Scandal while they're living a scandalous life? Wasting their time away. Trust me on this. And I look at, at this stage of my life, and I look at people who I knew had great potential. I knew they were intelligent. Saw so a guy that spent many years in jail. He was smart. I used to copy off his paper. Had it not been for him, I wouldn't have gotten out of school. I copied off his paper. But he was dumb. He hung around losers. He was dumb. He always found himself with the wrong people in the wrong place at the wrong time. And there are a lot of people doing that right now who don't end up in prison 
or in jail. I believe the world consist, consists of the caught and the uncaught, but who have imprisoned themselves by surrounding themselves with do-nothing, energy-draining people who don't learn. 85% of people, after they graduate from high school, never open up a book. And only 10% who do open up a book don't go past the first chapter. Wow. So part of what I'm suggesting to you, as you think about your goals and dreams, separate yourself. As you think about where you want to go with your life, you want to begin to saturate your mind with positive stuff. Just imagine our kids are singing songs that be better give me my money. Now, there, there's, there's, in the scientifically proven, words affect how your brain works. Do you hear me? Your words affect how your brain works. So if you're around people who have empty conversation or conversation that's filled with profanity and ignorance and vulgarity, it affects how your brain works. Do you hear that? I'm not making this up. This is scientifically proven. So you have to not only watch your language, but you have to watch the language that you expose your mind to. There are certain comedians I don't ever, I love them, they're talented, I, I just can't sit through the cursing. I can't do it. I love Chris Rock, he's a talented guy, I met him, he's an introvert, very reflective guy, can't sit through his program. He's got to drop the F word too many times for me. Listen, that's not good for your mental and physical health. Do you hear me? There's some things that you can make funny and you never have to ever use profanity. But today, it's about how low can you go. It's today, how vulgar can you get? And today, these young people, they, they respect nobody, nothing. Nothing. And, and so my heart goes out to parents who have children. These young kids today, what they're being exposed to. My God. My God. It's, it's something else. I, I say to you, you got goals and dreams. You're going through some tough times right now. Won't cost you nothing. Go on YouTube find everything that I have recorded and watch it every day, hours on end. It will change your life. It will change your life. It will teach you how to become successful. It's easier now to become successful than ever before. You have no competition. Now, here's something else. Secure yourself. I called to talk to a friend of mine who worked at a radio station in Detroit with Mildred Gaddis, and, and they laid him off. Brilliant guy. Laid him off. Why? Because he didn't do the job? No, because of politics, station politics. You got a job. You got to do two and three jobs for one paycheck and no job security. You can lose your job on foolishness. Foolishness. So this is a time that you want to, one, put things in your mind that will expand your mind, that will increase your belief in yourself, that will give you mental resiliency. And two, you want to secure your own future. you got to create yourself. You've got to create your own job. you got to look at yourself and say, what is, what is it I want to do? What talents, abilities that I have, and if you don't have any, go to the library or, go, or Google something. Get on Google and develop a talent. There's a guy has Ping Pong Studio. Just help him to do a commercial. He, he has all type of videos that he's used um, uh, clips from movies and has my voice in the background and, and, and Eric Thomas. And, and he created these inspirational videos. I said, hey, how did you learn how to do this when I found him? And he said, I, you know, I, I went out to Hollywood to try and get into the movie business, and I failed, and I had a construction company. I came back home, and, and, and then I just got online and decided that I wanted to get involved in film editing. And I found a place on Google. I Googled it, 
and I taught myself how to edit. Now he has his own company, editing films, earning over a million dollars a year. Did you hear me? See, if, if, if you turn off the television and turn up your life, if you let go of negative people who fill in your head with head trash, and you focus your time and energy on developing another skill, you'll be surprised at what you can do. I'm 70 years young. Before the end of the month, I'm, I'm flying. I'm going to Germany. I'm going to speak in Germany. Uh, before the end of the month, I'm going to London, England. Before the end of the month, I'm going to, I'm going to speak in Australia. I'm traveling around the world. And somebody else is paying me to come in to motivate them, <laughs> to, to talk to them. And I'm very glad to do it. <laughs> Whatever. Hello. <laughs> I'm telling you, I love this. Listen to me. Listen to me. You can design a life that you can be proud of where you're making money doing what you love to do, earning the kind of money that you deserve. If you spend time saturating your mind with positive material, stay away from people whose negative conversations can affect your attitude about yourself. And, and, and spend some time learning something. What is it you know today that, that you did not know yesterday? Make it, make it a point that you're going to learn something new every day. When I hang up, I've got some things that I'm, I'm looking at. I'm developing new skills. Uh, my goal is to learn something about the Internet Every day, I've got, I've, I've, I've got these skills that I'm working on that will serve me well because most people my age, they're, they're tired. They, they tired, honey. <laughs> they tired. They, they got one foot in the, on a banana peel and the other one in the graveyard. I'm having a great time. Life begins at 70. If you have a positive mindset, if you're looking for ways to improve yourself, and if you stay away from negative, energy-draining people who have no goals and no dreams, I believe, each one of you listening to me right now, listen to me, that there's something in you that attracted you to my voice. And that something in you, I call that your higher consciousness. There's a presence in you. That inner man, that inner woman, that knows that you can do more, that you can have more, that you can achieve more. And that if you honor that still small voice within you and continue to saturate your mind, with positive things, continue to look for people with talents, abilities, and skills, and surround yourself with people that you can learn from, people that you can grow from, and set for yourself big goals and dreams. There's some power in pursuit of a dream. When you are pursuing a dream, you develop confidence, you develop skills, you develop new relationships, you, you, you develop resources that I has not seen ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you if you live, live a life where you're pursuing goals outside of your comfort zone, where you're pursuing projects. See, we grow from people and projects. Look at the people in your life. How many projects do you have in your life that you're working on to make a difference? I'm working on my legacy. I'm a great, great grandfather. So I'm working on what will my mark be? How, how many more lives can I touch? How many more lives can I change before I check out? Let me share something with you. A lady went with a friend of hers whose father died. And her friend's father was a grumpy guy, mean-spirited. He had no friends. Nobody visited him. And when he died, she fulfilled his wishes. He wanted to be cremated. And she followed behind the hearse with her friend. 
to take her father to be cremated. And she said she stood there as they first prayed for her father, and then they, they pushed him in, and they waited. They went and did a few things, and they came back, and they collected his ashes in an urn about a day or two days later. And he wanted his ashes to be thrown in the wind. And she said, as her friend threw her father's ashes in the wind, and the wind blew the ashes, she said what grabbed her and moved her so deeply was, as the ashes disappeared, it was as if her friend's father never existed. Because he didn't live a life of contribution. He didn't have any projects that he was working on that would make a difference. He didn't build relationships with people that could have helped him do some of the things that he was sent here to do. No one was there to witness the throwing of his ashes, but his daughter and a stranger. Most people go through life like that. They die unlived lives. And I believe there's something in you that's causing you to hear my voice. Something in you that says, I want to live. See, it's one thing to survive, and but what it takes to live and what it takes to survive is two different things. Most people in survival mode are caught up in Weapons of mass distractions. So, my message to you, and you already know it, fill your head with words that can empower you. Spend several hours. I do it on a regular basis. Every day I have to spiritualize my thoughts. I have to listen to things. Why? Because... You're going to take some hits. Think it not strange that you're going to face the fiery furnaces of this world. You're going to take some hits. Something's going to happen to you or someone you care about. And you need the mental resiliency to accommodate the things that will be coming your way. Well, let's nothing happen to me. Don't worry. Just keep on living. Trust me. Trust me on this. Your time will come. Your name will be called. So isolate yourself. Take time every day. I call it God moments. Your time with God that you won't read any text messages or emails or take any phone calls. But you just spend that time listening and reading and praying and meditating to fill yourself up. To build mental resiliency. Next thing, make it a point. To learn something, to learn something that will allow you to continue to grow, that will allow you to continue to stimulate your thinking, your imagination. Because we're here to do a work. There's a calling on your life and my life. And as we learn, as we grow and expand, you'll discover things you can do that you don't even realize right now. Most people... Fail in life not because they aim too high and miss. Most people fail in life because they aim too low and hit. I did that for many years. I didn't think I can do what I'm doing. I'm flying around the world. People paying me strangers to come in and teach them how to be successful. I didn't think I could do this because I don't have a college education. Because I was in special education all through school and labeled educable mentally retarded. I didn't think I could do this. Listen to me. There are things you can do that you don't know, and you've got to challenge yourself. Well, I tried some things, and they didn't work out. So what? You will fail your way to success. Walter P. Chrysler failed in the, the automobile industry 42 times. But my God, look what happened to 43. You will fail your way to success. And the other thing is, Start watching people, observing them. 
people, see, I believe in energy. I believe in energy. There's some people that don't need to be in your space. There's some telephone calls you don't need to take. Some conversations that you don't need to expose yourself to because it will pollute your mind with ignorance. And so start being selective of who you give your time to. Ask the question, what value is this person bringing to me? Am I growing mentally, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually? Do they bring me peace? I've, I call a friend of mine, Dwight Pleasure, one of my platinum speakers. He's, he gives me a sense of peace. He's my spiritual brother. I, I love talking to him. John Garcia, there are certain people in my life that I, to hear their voice brings me a sense of peace and comfort. Certain people I talked to, I was with Alicia and Lorette today, two friends of mine who earn over $100,000 a month, and I struck a partnership with them. And those are my money-making partners. I, the, the, when I'm with them, the ideas are just flowing out of me, flowing, because of that kind of creative energy that I was in. Who's in your corner? Dr. Dennis Kimbrough out of Atlanta was right. He said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. I used to be Alicia's mentor. Now she is my mentor. I'm learning from her, and I'm proud of it. Here's what I want to say to you. This is your time. Make it a discipline. Dedicate yourself. Give yourself homework to work on your mind, to work on your health, to declutter your life, to clean your life up, to clean up your conversation, to start reading a minimum of 20 to 30 pages of something positive every day. A friend of mine, Mike Sims, he, he, he did something for a year, and it, he said it changed his life. Because he earned his first million at 26. And I said, well, how, how, how did you change your life? He said, man, for one year, I never turned on television. And, and, and I said, you didn't watch television? He says, no, no. I didn't watch the news. I said, how'd you find out what was going on? I said, people told me. And I wasn't even interested. He said, I have enough problems of my own. Why should I watch other people's problems? He said, and it changed his life. As I, as, as my health is stronger now than ever before, and part of my regiment, part of my prayers and my meditation and my exercise and my walking and meeting with my fitness coach, I don't watch television because it's not good for me mentally. It's too much dysfunctional stuff on there. I was in the airport and, and saw this girl that Chris Brown beat up or whatever, and, and that's the one that got that song out. Wow, such a pretty girl. It shows ignorance comes in all kind of packages, boy. Vulgarity, indecency, unbelievable. No sense of decency. Wow. Don't listen to it. Don't let your children listen to it. Don't entertain ignorance in the name of entertainment because it's hip. Got to restore respect and decency. Vulgarity and profanity is not good for your brain. When I train young men, I tell them to affirm an affirmation that when you use language that's degrading to women or to yourself, profanity is the strongest expression of a weak mind. Write that down. Put that up someplace, particularly in barber shops. Profanity is the strongest expression of a weak mind. You have something special. You have greatness within you. 
Challenge yourself. Push yourself. Surround yourself with people who have goals and dreams. Mastermind and encourage and inspire each other. And you will develop a strategy and a synergy to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. You have something special. You have greatness within you. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Stacey? Wow, 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 wow. Talk about being on fire tonight. Woo! This is, con- this is a controversial call tonight. <laughs> yeah, I said, oh, no, he did. <laughs> because there are a lot of people who think that vulgarity is normal. They think that it's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was on a bus, uh, a shuttle, going from one airline to the other, and there were two young men, they're probably about 20, between 24, between 24 and 27. And they were talking, going back and forth with each other. MF this, and man, I saw that B, and going back and forth with a, a shuttle full of people, and we are the only people of color on there. I, I wanted to crawl under a chair and say, I don't know them. <laughs> the people were looking at me saying, can you say something to them? And that, when they're, when they're gone that over that deeply, there's nothing to say. There's nothing to say. One of the first things, when my, my nephew gets out of prison, he has, he has these tattoos all around his neck that says, I just got out of prison. So we're uh, asking, what kind of job are you going to get? Who's going to hire you? You... you you got on you 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 got these signs that indicate this is where I've been spending my time. I, I suffer from HIV, hood infected virus, AIDS, addiction to incarceration and death syndrome. I said you're intelligent. You should travel with me on the road. This is come on. You didn't you didn't come out of that kind of home. Now your father went to prison, but my sister raise you to be a respectable young man. You were on the honor roll. You got an academic scholarship, and you decided to go to school and spend your time partying and doing drugs and breaking in people's houses in Atlanta and got arrested, and a lady judge recognized your intelligence as you told her that you had a girlfriend that was pregnant and you have learned your lesson, and, and you will change your behavior, and she gave you a break and put you on probation. And, and, and you went out and broke in another house while on probation, got arrested again. And she gave you another break, and she said, I don't ever want to see you again, and you came back a third time. That's wow. what I call retardation. Retardation. Stupid with the capital S. And I don't like to use those types of words, but you know what? You got to call it when you see it. You know, Maya Angelou said, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. (laughs) (laughs) It's a duck. Absolutely, Les. Yes, and if you, and if you know what? If you hang around these people, it will drive you to drinking, you know, uh, you just snap. I mean, and, and, and he had the unmitigated gall. My nephew had the unmitigated gall, and I'm so glad I wasn't there to say to my sister, I'm here because of you. You weren't a good mother. <laughs> look here. I look at, I'd have body slam him. Let me tell you something. She did all she could do, but he decided to run the streets with his homies. But... When he needs money on his books, he doesn't call his homies. He calls my sister, his mother. Can you put some on my books? Wow. Wow. Exactly where I say, wow. But you know what? what Mm -hmm. We have to. There's some people and some young people that life, We'll have to teach them some things that we can never teach them. 
Because some people, they have to get it from life. They have to get it from life. Don't waste your time. I told my sister, don't waste your time. Don't call me about no money. I, I, I don't bail out retarded people. Don't. My, my, I never... <laughs> <laughs> don't throw good money after crazy behavior that they know better. Absolutely. Know. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, you can't reward bad behavior, Les. And what you just talked about, I mean, there was so much in tonight's call to convince every person that's listening to play a bigger game and to really leave a mark. And you've been an inspiration to me and all of the Platinums with what we're creating, and one of the things that I do is work with young people and the language. Less, what you said is so true. I have to stop them and correct them so many times about the words that they are giving life to as they come out of their mouth. And I'm proud to say that, you know, sometimes even the most interesting characters will call and say, oh, sorry, miss, sorry, miss, because they know I don't tolerate it in my space. And if more of us would just stand up and be examples and use the kind of behavior and language that we want them to model, it would give them more opportunities to self-correct and really be on a better path. But as you said, if they're not willing, if they're not in a space where they feel affirmed, when they understand that they don't have to use profanity to express their thoughts and feelings, then we're laying down on our job of uplifting and changing the generation that's here with us now. But you know something? This this is a different generation. See, when you, well, you're not in my age category, but when I've come along, you know, my mother taught us to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. And if the neighbors saw you doing something, you know, boy, you better stop. I'm going to tell Mamie on you. I was respectful of our neighbors, and they can correct me. But let me share something with you. These young people today, it's a different kind of animal. A different kind of animal. I, 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 was, I was talking to three young girls. They probably I went to speak at this school, and, and they had a break, a lunch break or something. And so I was crossing the street, and, and these two girls talking to another girl about how they're going to beat her behind, and they didn't say behind, and they're calling all kind of bees. And I said, you are little queens. Why don't you make a decision to clean up your conversation and be respectful of each other? You are our future. You are the future Michelle Obama's. And one of them said, why don't you kiss our boom? <laughs> Woo! What? She said, why don't you kiss our, and you know what she said. Whoa. Wow! Mm. It, it, my my mouth dropped open. It took my breath, and I started laughing. And so one girl, a fourth girl, she she just watched. She didn't say anything. She didn't observe. She said, "Why did you laugh? Weren't you insulted?" I said, "No." I said, "I thought about something." My mother had on her mirror when I was a kid. She said, oh, Lord, help me keep my nose out of other people's business. And these young girls, at some point in time, we don't know that I just dropped a seed. At some point in time, one of them might take root. And I'm just very glad that one didn't take a knife out or call their boyfriend up to jump on me. That's not uncommon. And I just say, God, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I spent three hours last night, three and a half hours last night, thinking about... What's next? The the projects. Where should I where should I go? Can is anybody interested? I I want to start a movement to save young men and young girls. I got a training for that. That one change their mindset. Two teach them how to become effective communicators. Three teach them how to dress like a prospect and not a suspect. 
Four, teach them how to develop a relationship that's an asset to them and not a liability. And five, teach them how to earn income over the Internet. Even if they have a felony in their record, they can earn money and never have to go out and be rejected in the job market. But guess what? The majority, 99% of my engagements, I'm, going, I'm leaving the country. You know, they asked me, given the state of the people in your country who look like you, how do you have time for us? <laughs> wow. I was born and raised in Liberty City. They don't call me in Liberty City or Overtown in Miami to come there and speak or train. That's where I started. I was a state legislator in Columbus, Ohio. I was a state legislator and, and for three terms and used to lead demonstrations of ten to 15,000 people to demonstrate against things in the system that was maintaining our detriment. They don't invite me to come and speak or implement a training program that will have long-range impact to eliminate what I call HIV, hood-infected virus, or AIDS, addiction, and incarceration, and death syndrome? No. No. I went to a church in Cleveland. I, I took my time, volunteered, went to a church in Cleveland, and when it was time for me to speak, they said, oh, I'm sorry, the Cavaliers might have come on. And the minister said, whoa, sorry, Mr. Brown. And they ran out of the church. Do you hear me? I never got to speak. Wow. I walked real slow, hoping that one will say, I said, God, just give me one. Just give me one. And, and most of them were ex-offenders. Have one stop me. And I walked slow toward my car saying, touch one of them, Lord. Touch one that I could talk to. That's my assignment. Like Mr. Washington touched me. And by the time I got to my car, I was crying like a baby because not one stopped. Not one. The parking lot emptied. 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 Following behind a minister who had a brand new car collected from them and there's a, an old saying wherever you find yourself at some point in time you made an appointment to be there and I believe that in my advice to you and to the other platinum speakers from what I have learned and there's a book called Change or Die. And his first scientific book and study done, if I had known what I know now, I would have used my time differently. And part of what they say is that 9 out of 10 people would rather die than change. Would rather die than change. Mm. Yes, and that's, that's been proven. But, but here's what. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will, let him come. I walk slow. I didn't call anybody. I walk slow so that somebody who was willing to call me, to stop me and say, hey, mister, can I talk to you? As I did with Mr. Washington. Mr. Washington, I'm the one, sir. Look at me. My mother works in the cafeteria. They call me the dumb twin. You spoke to me that changed my life. Sir, thank you. I'm the one, sir. I'm the one. And I was hoping that one of those young men would say, I'm the one. But it didn't happen then, but it happened later on someplace else. And so whosoever will, work with the willing. Work with the willing. Don't waste your time with people who are not ready yet. There's a book called The Kabbalion I read many years ago that says the lips of the wise are sealed to the ears of the ignorant. And so, and the scripture says, you know, don't cast pearls before swines lest they turn and rend you. Don't waste your time trying to talk to people of low consciousness or they get angry at you because they can't hear you. They can't hear you. And so that's why 
whatever I can do to help you and a needer, because you're willing. And the other platinum speakers, you're willing to invest in yourself, to work in yourself, train yourself. You're willing to be coachable. Most people are not willing. They're not willing. We we'll teach you how to become a member of the of the two percenters. Only two percent of the world population ever earn over a million dollars in their lifetime. I've done it sixty five times. And now with what we have available and what I've been exposed today with Alicia and Lorette and a guy named Eben. You will do, it took me three years to do my first million. It, will you be able to do it in a fraction of the time because of the tools that we have available? This is, this is the greatest time in history. And for every African-American male that goes to college, 100 go to jail. Wow. And so last night, I just, I was, I couldn't sleep. I was just going, tossing back and forth. Can I go up in there? Can they hear me? Well, they say, go sit down, old man, old 70-year-old man. Give him a cane. Give him a wheelchair. Go sit down. We don't want to hear that positive mess from you. I was, I was just tossing and turning, saying, God, do I still have it? Do I still have it? Can I create a listening? Do I still have it? And I heard a voice in myself that says, yes, you still have it. I even called my son, Calvin. Do you think I still have it? He said, of course you do, Dad. Yes, you do. I said, but you hear me because you're my son. He said, but I couldn't always. That's true. And so sometimes you, even in the work that we do, giving people a spirit of optimism, we have our moments in the Garden of Gethsemane where we ask ourselves, do I still have it? Can I do this? Because I believe that God has given me grace to be able to do more work because my work is not done. My best years are in front of me, not behind me. My best years, my greatest work is in front of me. And I'm looking for ways to get my mind around it. But ultimately, I believe that I have to start out in this new place where I started from Edward Albee in a movie, a play called The Zoo Story, said sometimes you have to go a long distance out of the way to come back a short distance correctly. And I, I, I believe that I'm going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. And that if no one shows up, I'm going to get the space and I'm going to put the word out. If no one shows up, so be it but at least well, I would have done my part. Well, well let yes. before you say another word, of course you still got it. We're all still trying to catch up to you. Every time we think we got a little bit of a wing going on, you come and sweep it right to the next level. So everybody that's listening, you still have it. You've been so generous with what you have, and you inspire us. Like, you know what I love about you? You just don't what? talk about living a bigger life. You take the same action that you're encouraging everybody else to do. We can't sit back and not read and not grow and not think about projects and not do because that's what you're modeling. That is your behavior. That is your legacy that you're leaving in us. And even though Calvin is your son and John Leslie and Ona, they too can see how they've transformed. They can see what it is that you have been able to do, but what they can do as a result of your example. So just like them, the platinum speakers, those who answer the call, those who say yes and appreciate what you have invested in us will continue to be a part of this legacy of your movement of a million. I'll take it to a million now, as you say, 100,000. I think we need to go to a million voices of hope for those that are willing. And Lord knows, lest I learn my lesson, work with the willing because the rest will drag you down. <laughs> 
Oh, that's it now. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> if, if Jesus said, you know, all power is in my hand, but oh, by the way, the poor will always be among you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord, listen, thank you so much for your words of encouragement. I needed that. So you say I still have it. I needed that. Thank you so much. Well, you definitely it. do. Definitely, okay. definitely. Let's do you know we love you. We've got to rest your voice because we have another call in less than 10 minutes. But I will yes. tell the audience how they can connect with you on Facebook and to share their words with what they received tonight, to put that on your Facebook page and to yes. interact with you because you have been posting messages of hope. You have the videos that they can download. They can just go straight to lesbrown.com, yes. Les Brown events. They can go to brown.less on Facebook. That's brown.less so that they can really understand how serious you are about taking it to a whole new level with all you've done, Les. And you said that life begins at 70, so I'm not born yet. <laughs> 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 I love it. Okay, well, listen, those of you that heard the message tonight, you know, I would like to hear something from you. If you heard me tonight, yes, at lesbrown.com, email me. I want your comments, and, and if you have a voice and have a an urge and a hunger to make a difference in people's lives, let me know that, too, in the email. Yes, at lesbrown.com. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stacy. You have something special. You've got greatness in you. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> thank you, Les. Love you to life. Thank you again. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, especially our first-time callers that found out about Les Brown's Motivational Monday Night Call. Mark it on your calendars. Put it in your book. This is your place to be every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tell a friend. Bring someone back. Make sure you send your comments to Mr. Brown at yes at lesbrown.com. That's yes at lesbrown.com. Go on to the Facebook page. That's brown.less, brown.less. It's the one that will soon be at a million plus. So please make sure that you go and visit and join the movement of change and voices of hope. If you want to connect with the platinum speakers, Anita, myself, and those voices that you hear each and every week when Mr. Brown is traveling, you can go to Les Brown, Platinum Speakers Network .com, and that's LBPSN, www.lbpsn, to meet some of those individuals. But more importantly, use what Mr. Brown gave you tonight to activate the greatness that's inside of you. We believe in you, we're counting on you, and we're going to do this thing called Life Together. My name, once again, is Dr. Stacey and T. Grant. It's been a pleasure being your host tonight, and we look forward to hearing your voices again next week, Monday. Have an incredible week and a more awesome life. Bye-bye.